Farms TV exclusive show right here. What's going on everybody, Chad Arms TV, and we are back. I don't wanna say we are here, we are back, because six years ago, me and the guy across the table here, we did an interview, and um, we're back again, man. This is my boy, Upchurch, Ryan Upchurch. What's up? What is up, Skin? It's been a while. Man, it's been it's been a while for sure, for sure, but it was dope, man, because you know you, you hit me up saying you wanted me to come interview, and that meant the world to me, bro, just because you know us doing what we did before, mm -hmm. and just having Having a dope history before, you know what I mean? It's just cool. Oh, yeah. I was fucking binge watching your videos, and I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm hitting up Chad to come over and do a fucking interview, man. Yeah. Because you already have one from what? what when was that? It was a 20, while. It was 2015, bro, because it was when you dropped the Cheatham County EP. That was a while ago. Yeah. Pulled yeah. it from West Nashville, baby. Yeah. Like, so, Chad, on. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we're just going to, this will be a series of stuff, man, kind of like we've done the stuff with Worm, we've done the stuff with Jelly. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be the same, similar style. We're just going to touch on different things, and yeah. we're going we're gonna to let my boy just speak his mind, man. He, um, he, he let me know that we can ask away, so that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start off the interview, man, just by asking you, mm -hmm. who is Ryan Upchurch? Man, Ryan Upchurch is just a dude dick. Was born in fucking Nashville one night, growed up around here, sang songs about this place. Um, nothing really special. Just a fat, tatted up redneck that got a bunch of kitchen tattoos and <laughs> sang about around here. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, man. Like, like, like you've talked about before, I know that you said you started doing music when you was in high school, correct? Mm -hmm. And then once, you, once that came along, did you take a, a break from music and then start doing the comedy stuff, or was it that just, wasn't that just like a random video you shot or something? Yeah, man. Like I, I, I dabbled with music in high school, and then I was like, you know, I, I had everybody around me tell me that ain't gonna fucking work. You're never gonna amount to nothing. Yada yada. So I was like, man, maybe they're right. So put it down for a little bit, and then you know, after high school, I started working construction every day. You know, trying to make ends meet. Hell. I was living in a, a little shack I was renting from uh, what, Steve Bass on Indian Springs Road. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, I was like, how do you know if you don't fucking try? You just gotta fucking try. Right. So, you know, on the on the job side, I was making videos and shit of fucking with the workers and stuff. And, you know, people liked it on Vine. And then next thing you know, here I am writing songs about all this shit. It's my job now. And so like, the cool thing about your story too is, like we talked about, it, but again, some people may not have seen that interview, but you said the video, as far as the, the video portion, because it all kind of was, you were doing kind of both at the same time, mm -hmm. correct? Well, wasn't it like a random video that you recorded one night and then you didn't even upload it yourself? Yeah, I ended up, uh, well, I made a funny video. I think it was on Vine at the time and it got took from there and just shared everywhere. And then the next thing you know, it's one video after the other, keeping these people engage with what I'm doing just trying to be funny and yeah. people thought it was funny so which really it's not even me trying to be funny it's just I, I have a goofy like dumb squirrel personality anyway right. so I can get on there and really do anything and they'll be like look at this fucking idiot like you know but yeah. it's just everyday day shit and it just kind of snowballed after that like you started doing that mm -hmm. and then you were like well it's obviously something that people like so I guess you just kind of kept it rolling oh yeah yeah and then it, before you know it you was it was way higher than you was expecting it to be, I'm sure. Oh yeah. And then you just for a long kept time, around. for a long time, I, I focused on the videos and shit, and you know, because it was fun to do. But you know, now I'm 30 years old, and I'm not as crazy as I used to be. You know, I'm not as wild. I don't, you know, I pay taxes and shit now. I'm fucking right. own a business, and back then, this, I didn't give a fuck. I'm just out wilding, you know. Yeah. So. That's dope, man. It's like you started off. And you in 2015, 2016, and then you started seeing the music really start to. You knew that you were popular with the Vine stuff and the video stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you think when you started dropping music alongside of it, did you think it would do the same numbers, or were you kind of nervous about it when you first dropped it? Like wondering. Man, I was the, the first project I dropped. I was nervous because I was like, man, maybe everybody's gonna not like this music, and then turn around and not be interested in my funny videos no more or maybe doing the music will work and then 
I'll start getting attached to that, and then people will get mad at me for not doing videos. Right. It, it was a million different thoughts, to be right. real. Yeah. Well, it worked out for sure, bro. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the discography is is deep, man. Are you sitting on, like, what, close to 20 albums or EPs? Or I know it was 17 lot, or 18. Dude. It was close. It was a lot. And that's, a, that's an honest answer. Like, I don't want to be that guy who's people like, oh, well, he's big dicking or something. No, I really don't know. No, you just be putting out music, because bro. I just like putting it out and slinging it behind me yeah. and just keep moving. You yeah, know? moving to the next one, yeah, for sure. Um, of all the albums that you did, like I know that, do you have a certain one that just you remember the most as far as that had a, a really special vibe to it that kind of stands out to you? You've made a lot of dope stuff over the years, whether it's rock or rap or country, but was there something out of one of those projects that you, maybe just the recording of it or just something about it that just sticks out more than some of the other ones? Yeah, um, I would say that would have to be, I think my turning point album that was real sentimental to me was probably Parachute because okay. that's the first album my I had a feature, I got to do a feature with my mom. Yeah, that was And, you know, we, yeah. we wrote a song about, uh, you know, people who are maybe at their lowest point in life because me and my family have been at our lowest point in life with each other. And as long as you're, if you can hit that bottom point and be at rock bottom, but if you're at rock bottom with somebody you see as a rock in your life, mm -hmm. you'll get out of that rock bottom. And and that's another thing I feel like in country music is fading away, which is family values and caring about stuff like sitting at a fucking dinner table without the phones and talking to someone else. You know, we right. got to get back to the realization. And that's what the song Fallen is about. And not to mention, it's got my mom on it, who's a beautiful singer, right. uh, a, has a beautiful singing voice. And that was our song to the people who think they're at rock bottom. So it was real special for that reason. Not yeah. only that, that's the song that uh, Hollow Boys is on, which is like the yeah. up church, the country boy anthem oh, right now. Oh, for sure, bro. For sure. And then the Parachute song, that's the Parachute song is from you. Is mm -hmm. my favorite song you've done. Thank you, like, man. I really dig that one a lot, man. That song's cool. about making it to the top and figuring out that the top's not all it's fucking cracked up to be. For sure. For sure. Um, influences, I know... You've probably got a lot of different styles of influences and it probably depends on what you're doing. I know when you do the rock stuff, the Creeker stuff, mm -hmm. you you really you really dig into Alice in Chains and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So like with your country as far as that, like in rap, do you have what would your influences be for some of that stuff whenever you start to My influences for country, uh, it's a little bit of what everybody knows and a little bit what no one knows. Right. Like, you know, I do like the older Luke Bryan songs, like the song, uh, That's What Country Is, yeah. you know, which tells about, it's a song about, hey, y'all, everybody's thinking country is the best pro shit and yada yada, when really it's not, it's this old school shit over here, yeah. you know, uh, Tim McGraw, uh, like the Red Rag Top, When the Stars Go Blue, yeah. stuff like that, uh, Clay Walker, yep. uh, which was awesome because I got to end up doing a song yeah, with dude. him, Justin yeah. Moore. That's the side of country that I listen to more is like the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, but then again, you can go back and I listen to uh, Mark Chestnut, Bubba oh, yeah. Shot Jukebox. For sure. And I even go far back as I listen to Buck Owens. Uh, and yeah. if y'all don't know Buck Owens, look up the song uh, Ruby. Yeah. Um, so it's a wide range, but it really stops at like the early 2000s. Yeah. You, are you, you're influenced by Elvis too, right? Fuck to the yeah, dude. Yeah. Elvis was, was the shit. He was the man, dude. And if you watch some of his interviews, it's so fucking cool how Tennessee artists so far apart in time relate to each other. Like, yeah. I, you see interviews of him, he's on the phone rolling his eyes like, what the fuck do these people want? Yeah. You know, he's got a song called Dixieland. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Um, he, he was an artist who made his way into black music during a time where white boys weren't in that kind of music. Yeah. That's kind of what's going on right now with country rap. Yeah, um, for sure. There's interviews of him where they're like, why do you have four Cadillacs? And he's like, because I like Cadillacs. And they're like, do you dress up in a tuxedo and drive through town? He's like, no, I fucking do it in blue jeans and, je and boots, man. Like, yeah. he was just so cool. He was so normal. Yeah. Do you, speaking of Elvis, do you kind of feel where he's coming from probably back in the day as far as being, as far as the popularity goes and dealing with, it's worse now because of social media. But do you kind of relate to him in that way too? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to like 
popularity and how like how how he dealt with like cra not crazy, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Oh, 100 percent. I definitely yeah. smoke way more weed now than I've become like this because you know, and people always wonder. They're like, yeah, please. Sir. People always wonder, like, oh, this person's being an asshole. Like, you hear stories about Elvis being a jerk. It's like, hey, man, maybe Elvis just wanted five minutes to himself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And people don't realize that until you're living in the madness, you can't comment on the madness. Like a kid the other day, he's like, why the fuck are you starting to act like uh, every, uh, every popular celebrity? I said, you be famous for almost a decade. Then come talk to me. Yeah. I wanted to ask when it came on is, uh, where were you at? Where was your fan base level at when you decided to throw music at them? It was pretty low. Was it? I think I was still in the hundreds of thousands when that happened. That was in 2015, like he said. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it was still super low, really. When we when we cut our interview in 2015, I wanted to say you were talking about you just got a quarter of a million followers on Instagram or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, that would have made sense around that time it was, frame. Yeah, it was in the low hundreds of thousands. Which is so. still dope, but compared to... To now, it's a, it's a I think difference. it's grown to where I believe now I'm more probably more known for music than I am the videos. For sure. Now, for at sure. Least. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I was curious when you when you flipped that switch and made that move. Was it was it full steam ahead on the music solely or full steam ahead? Got gotcha. you. Everything music, bro. Yeah. I oh. drove my producer Stoner. I probably drove him crazy. What up, Stoner? Yeah, shout out Stoner, man. We gotta get him on here too. That'd be dope to get you and him on some stuff too, like doing some stuff oh, like that. Yeah, talk about shit like that. Stoner's cool shit. Yeah, I, it's cool. I got to meet him last couple weeks ago. <clears throat> finally, and it's, it was cool to meet up with Stoner for sure. Hell yeah. Um, so like influences, like so. Let's go like for rap. What like some of your influences for rap? What would you say some of those would be when you were doing like rap records? Man, dude, Hobson. Yep. Um, Eminem, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the guy who brought us on the music. That's like the first. Rapper I fucking heard of really one one of the first ones the first rapper I ever heard of was Fifty Cent. I used to get rich or die trying was your first well, album. Yeah, yep. dude, that shit yep. was awesome. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. That's like the ah, first album. Bro, yeah. When you was talking to Adam Twenty Two, and he was like, I didn't know he did. When he had the y'all must have forgot. Oh, he had that song. <laughs> he had that song, bro. And what's cool is, I mean, dude, Roy Jones Jr. was a fucking chicken fighter too. My awesome. grandfather has pictures with Roy Jones Jr. at Oscar Aiken's house. Yeah. Holding roosters because yeah. that's what he did, bro. That's why Roy Jones Jr. is always making uh, rooster uh, analogies. Yeah, because he—that's what he done. So he was a fucking redneck motherfucker too. That's so dope. Super dope. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we can talk about social media. So yeah, how do you see like since you've been so big on the social media end of things, alongside of the music and stuff, since you started to get steam and traction, how? Have you seen it change over these last six years? The goods, the bads, you know what I'm saying? Social media itself? Yeah, just in general, yeah. I mean, you can do certain examples if you want. Just kind of seeing, since you're so, like, high up on those as far as numbers-wise and things like that, how do you look at social media now? Like, do you, you know what I mean? Like, have you seen it change, good, bad? It, it has definitely changed a lot. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's good. now it's going to be harder to be famous because there's, you have so many people who are famous for two weeks yep. that it really covers up people who are famous for a long time. Like, and I truly believe that when I got into social media and the people all around, not just around me, but like in that little time, everyone who got famous then is going to be stuck famous forever because at the beginning of every trend, all of those people in the beginning are always stay stuck famous. And I feel like everybody who's, in the beginning of social media, making the videos and stuff, I feel like they're going to be famous forever. But I feel like it's going to be way harder to be famous now. Yeah. And then, you know, you have so many duplicates now that are just able to throw something up, which is fine. That's good because that's how you find these really unique artists. But it also covers up those really unique artists because everyone's, you know, everybody's a rapper. Everybody's an Instagram model. Everybody's a, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I figured like with the social media too, <clears> I know... <throat> There, there are goods and bads, but like everything that you said makes perfect sense too. But mm -hmm. I noticed too that like since then, obviously, it's gotten more hectic for you, I'm sure, because oh, yeah. you've gotten bigger since then. So obviously that comes with it, good and bad. But well, I know that you try, to, you try to separate sometimes from it too. You almost oh, have to. You have to. It, social media will drive you crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, you got to think, dude. People back in the day, like Kurt Cobain and all them, like, they, people that killed themselves back then, dude, imagine the stress of it now. Yeah. Now you can't even fucking shit or walk outside your house and fucking go to the car wash without being, people being like, oh, I know where he's at. Skirt. And dude, when you're hounded like that all the time, that is really bad for your mental state. I'm sure and it's crippling, you, man. Like we talked about last night, yeah. Yeah, and social media is like a fucking drug now. So some people can't put it down. Yeah. Or they'll go nuts too. Yeah. Or keep keep slowly going nuts from being on it. You know? Yeah. And I think that you, the younger generation is going to have way more of an issue or getting away from that versus us. All of us went outside and played army and yeah. climbed trees and sure. walked around the fucking neighborhood doing Used shit. Used our imagination for stuff. Yeah, yeah, running from dogs. Sure. Now, fuck, from sun up to sun down, there's some kids who don't even go outside to even see the sun. I know a few. Yeah, and that, and that kills uh, <laughs> imagination. It kills, yeah. you know, it kills all kind of shit. It just makes your brain like this mush. Yeah. So with, sure. the, with the social media, do you personally, do you read the comments? Do you get fed up in that? Do you, Man, do you get into that? In, did you stop doing that at a certain point? Do you occasionally end up I stop in spurts. Right. You know, I'll sit there. And that's the fucked up thing about it is you could read a thousand comments that are good, that are encouraging, yep. that uplift you. Inspiring. And you'll see one asshole comment from fucking some asshole yeah. in Arizona. Yeah. And you'll be like, fuck that guy. And it'll ruin the rest of your day. Yeah, for but sure. I've, I've like learned that. to not not even let it. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll figure out, like today, like every dude who comment, every male who comments something assholeish to me, I'll just put you, beta, me, alpha, and leave it at that. Yeah. And... It gives them not the satisfaction of what they want because I'm not going to see it no more. They're going to keep fucking typing Harry Potter books while I'm not <laughs> riding full with my old lady. Yeah, you know for sure. Speaking of that too, I, it probably I know that that's probably stressful too. Like when y'all are just trying to go out and have some time to yourself, and then it's kind of I know some people don't mean bad or harm by, but there's like you've said before, there's a way to go about those things, and there's a time and a place for that stuff. Of course, right. And mine's so broad that I'm, I'm like, why doesn't anybody understand? Hell, I've gotten online 500 times and said, you can meet me anywhere besides my house. And I'm cool with it. And I go out by myself. I mean, don't worry. I ain't going to shoot nobody. This is the only security I have with me when I go somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't mind meeting people out in public. It's just don't come to my fucking house. And when it comes to relationships, this is especially uh, extraordinary for my current girlfriend because I did, that's somebody I dated when I was 17, 18 years old. Yeah. So she knew me when I was broke, wearing fucking ugly clothes, yeah. only had $20 for gas that night. Yeah. Um, and now she, that we're together now, she's like, yo, your life is effing crazy. But I can trust her to not leave me. She's one of those ones that she is she's down to right. get in the groove sure. with me because she's known me for so long. So and she knew you before all this. 100%. Yeah. I was that's driving to her house, fucking sneaking in her window, Driving there in a shitty ass rusted out Ford Midnight, dude. Like, yeah. and she was riding with me. No radio, no AC, no nothing. She just, so she wanted to be with you. She can yeah. ride in the junk. She can ride the Lambo, bro. Yeah, right. that's dope, man. Got two microwaves because we made it. Chad Arms TV. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Arms TV cribs right here, baby. That's what I. Man, church, what'd you get when you got mine, man? Two microwaves. <laughs> Double oven, too, baby. Two time. Oh, yeah. What you making in there? Some Jimmy Dean sausage? Jimmy Dean sausage. Did you feel, so like, I said the same thing to Jelly too. When did you feel things start to take a hit, like yeah, a, Yeah, was there a moment? Like a switch where it was like, it's popping, it's popping, but then there was something when you were like, oh, Shit's this real. is, this is, this is going to the moon. When Holler Boy came out. That's when it was when, when the When Holler Boy's the song come out, I was yeah. like, Just fuck. Just the feedback, yes. the immediate reaction. Yeah, because like the whole time, being on the internet, being on the internet, everybody is, it seems like, is a character. Mm -hmm. Like, and a lot of the times the characters are um, swapped attributes. So if somebody's a real passive aggressive person on the internet, they'll be super aggressive because that's what they're getting to fix through yep. the screen. Yep. Yep. And me being so regular, a lot of people a lot are sketchy of it and they're like, maybe he's not really like that. But when Holler Boys came out, the song, it let everybody, I feel like that was the time where everybody was like, okay, that's our guy. That's our dude who's been in some trouble. That's our guy who's fucked up and admitted he's fucked up. 
that's the guy who's done wrong and been like, yep, I done wrong, my bad, I'll fix it. And has showed you all the flaws and how to fix those things rather than acting perfect all the time. Because nobody's fucking perfect, dude. Hell, yeah. I've been on the internet fucking up for six years, but the next day I'll get online and be like, hey, I fucked up. Or, hey, that motherfucker's a liar. And here's the proof on why they're a fucking liar. Yep. And if you just tell the truth, you're bulletproof. Yeah. Nobody can fuck with you. Yeah, for sure. Even if the truth's bad. Yeah. So this is going to be an interesting one. I, I'm excited about it because you're you wanted me. You said you wanted to talk about it. Country rap. <laughs> but what is what is Up Church's views on country rap? Where it's at now? Where it used to be? Like just whatever you just whatever you want. You just go. It's a lot bigger now, but there's a lot of motherfuckers in there now. There's a lot of motherfuckers in there now that ain't fucking country, bro. They're just flat out not fucking country. They can't fucking start a lawnmower. They can't fucking <laughs> hook up a bush hog. They can't fucking sway Harleys at 80 miles an hour on back roads. They can't. Yeah. All the country shit, the redneck shit, if you're not... A lot of them ain't doing it. They're just saying, hey, I'm a redneck. It's like, okay, well... When I click on your profile, you're always in a room with a fucking Nike shirt on, and which is fine. That's cool. Yeah. But but don't be out here saying you're all this shit, but you ain't backing it up. Just say you ain't that. That makes you way more cooler. Yeah. If, you, if you're a city slicker, yo, that's cool. Yeah. If you admit you're a city slicker, that, that means you're real as fuck. Hey, I'm going to hang out with you now because yeah. you know who you are. These motherfuckers are just trying to make some money, bro. They think if they if they say a uh, beer tractor truck mudding in a song, yeah. they think oh these here's what they think they think oh these country people just want ain't nobody rapping for country people. I can make a shitty rap song and I ain't even fucking country and I can sell it to them because ain't nobody making nothing for them. That's yeah. what they think. It's a money grab, dude. Yeah. And it's a that, lot of them are bullshitting. Yeah, ninety percent of them's bullshit. Well, they see. Well, they. I think a lot of it just from my like perception is. I see where a lot of people probably have seen what you've been able to do for music in general, not just country rap, but, and I think what they're, a lot of those folks do are like, well, he did it, now I'm gonna try doing it too, and maybe it'll get it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And a lot of it's just coming from, it's not coming from a genuine place. Yours was coming from a genuine place, because that's just who you are. Right. You know what and, I'm saying? And that's the thing, like, if you're bullshitting in country rap, and I said this, I said this the other day, in gangster rap, if you're trying to act like a gangster and in real life somebody checks you and you ain't a gangster, yep. well, then you ain't selling gangster rap no more. Yeah, you're, you're... Country rap ain't nothing like gangster rap when it comes to the day-to-day -day life. But the, the consumer, if you are a redneck, if you're saying you're a redneck country-ass motherfucker, well, you better be going to a mud park and uh, riding your ass off and they better see you in public fucking... Smoking weed, riding a fucking Harley. You better show them that you really are that. Otherwise, they only listen to two songs, and that's it. Yeah, they ain't gonna listen to you no more. You'll lose, lose your credibility, man. For Fuck sure. Yeah. And then that's yeah. But I, I wanted to, to get your opinion on that because I know that you probably just the word of that probably is just like ah. With you, just because you've you've went above and beyond that. You're not. You've got so you're you're up church. You know what I'm saying? Right. You've got so many different things, but I know. That's what you always get brought up with alongside. Mm -hmm. So that's why I figured it'd be cool to ask you about it. And a lot of the and a lot of the country rap dudes, uh, as soon as one thing goes wrong, they backpedal. For instance, yeah. Confederate flag. Like, yeah. hey man, it, it's cool as fuck. If you don't fuck with it, that's fine. We ain't even gotta talk about it. Not you. I mean, like yeah, people in general. Really disagree, like, yeah. We ain't gotta fuck. That don't have to be the thing that separates us. Because I tell you why. When it comes to the rap shit, I also grew up on. Young Jeezy, Plies, yeah. uh, fucking uh, Yo Gotti, you know, shit like that. But they're all from Dixieland, bro. Yeah. There, there's there's vid music videos and rap songs from the early 2000s where they're all rocking this. Ludacris, yeah. Kanye West, yeah. Plies, like a lot of them. Yeah. And it's changed now and it's it has separated us. If nobody gave a fuck about that, and we got down to business. And for instance, think about this. What if Up Church and Plies got together and did a Who Hotter Than Me remix with the whitest of the white and the hoodest of the hood, or the country of the country yeah. and the hoodest of the hood? That'd be fucking fire, dude. Yeah. And we're both from the same place. Yeah, for sure. 
There you go, Plies, if you're watching this, man. Eat your little wolf, Plies. <laughs> I like it, there. I like that, there. <laughs> the squinch powder. Where's my boy over here, man? We're hanging out with old Ryan, man. Drinking juice. <laughs> Drinking juice. <laughs> Drinking juice and winning. Hell yeah, a little smoke. Dude, I'm gonna make me a sausage and biscuit real quick. <laughs> real quick. Fuck yeah. Hey, man. Like a <laughs> Handle that. Like a GD, yeah. Savage. Totally get it. Chat Arms TV, man. Show and Brooke Entertainment. Creek Squad. Up church. You. So, do you have any crazy stories about, like, road stories, show stories? You could rifle off a few of them. We could break. You know what I'm saying? Just, I figured you probably got some. Oh, fuck yeah. Well, the night we uh, broke the floor in Florida, that shit was wild. I'm up there doing fucking hillbilly, and everybody's jumping up and down. So and what's capacity? What, what, what's going on? Like, what's the specifics? Where were you at? Where this Fuck, I, I was at this place called The Barn, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in Florida. And uh, it was it was a little place, but fucking we packed that bitch out. And I get up there and start doing hillbilly, and I noticed everybody's jumping because I started jumping. And then I looked around, I was like, oh, fuck. The walls were going. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is not good, I don't think. So I, I was like, fuck it, whatever. I'm, I'm still doing the song. Yeah. I, everybody's standing by the walls. is like, yo, what the fuck? The building's falling down. Next thing I know, this big fucking security guy comes up to me. And he goes to grab the mic from me. If you watch the video, he goes to grab the mic from me. I jerk it away from him, and I keep doing the song. And then he whispers in my ear, or yells in my ear. He said, the fucking floor's got out of my <laughs> And I was like, oh shit. So I looked at Cliff and I was like, and then the next thing I know, everybody that's standing in the middle of the floor, like shrinks like three foot. They fucking fall on the floor. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Wow. Everybody started falling into each other and wow. shit. And they were like, everybody evacuate. The fucking floor broke, dude. It fucking sunk down like three feet and we fucked that place up. Didn't even get to finish the damn show. I was like, damn. Anybody get hurt? Fuck, no, I don't think so. Well, that's good. Hope not. What year was this? When was this over? Shit, it was like two, three years ago. Wow. When that happened. And there's footage of it? No, fuck yeah, it was on the news. Damn. The dude's like, I think the fucking song was called Jump. It's like, no, we were just jumping. The song wasn't called Jump. They were doing crisscross jump, I think, or something <laughs> happened. It was wild. <laughs> See, what else? Uh, fuck, a riot happened in Kentucky one time. Because we showed up and fucking... Coke Ford comes up to me. He's like, man, it's weird here. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I was on stage doing my set and people was crawling up on the stage behind me and like hanging on me and shit. I was like, not the fuck when I get up there. So Coke Ford ends up leaving and I'm about to go on. I'm like 10 minutes from going on stage. If people start running up to our tour bus and they're like, there's a chick over here. I think she's got a broke neck. Two fucking foolers, <laughs> two, <Surprise>! two foolers <laughs> come flying and hit each other. And two girls hit heads with each other, no helmets on. Ooh. And one of them was laying in a ditch with a broke back. And oh. Oh the security God. there was trying to pick this fucking chick up and throw her in this can am. And, and my, my security and paramedics were like, fuck no, she could have a broke back. So we're sitting there waiting for that. When this fucking helicopter comes to pick this chick up, who's all fucked up, these idiots start shooting fireworks. So the helicopter can't land. Oh it's fucking Black so Hawk down. Dude, I'm like, get me a fucking golf cart. They give me a golf cart. I drive all the way down to the fucking stage, fucking get on stage. I'm like, get me a fucking microphone. I grab the microphone. <laughs> this is also online, by the way. <laughs> I was like, I who in the fuck? The I said, who in the fuck is running this fucking shit? Whoever's running this shit can suck my fucking dick because y'all suck at doing this. Yada, 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 yada. I was like, there's a chick over here with a fucking broke back. Y'all are shooting fireworks. That helicopter's trying to land, yada, yada. And then I threw the mic down. I'm about to go get off stage. And this big motherfucker, dude. He fucking took his fucking security thing off and got mad. I was like, I'll grab this mic stand and fuck you up as much as I can. Oh, wow. And long story short, I ended up getting back in the golf cart and going back up to the RV. Shit popped off and a riot started. And then I had a bunch of people trying to kill us. So I'm in the fucking tour bus. <laughs> I, told the, I told the girls that was in there. I said, y'all get on the fucking lay down flat on the ground. I'd stay back here in this fucking room. I grabbed my AR-15, I fucking loaded that bitch, I fucking racked it. And then all the police showed up. And I was like, oh shit. So then, 
I got my pistol all stuck in my pants, and I'm sitting outside trying to talk to the police. When I find out this is all some weird shit, like I think the police are friends with these people. I think uh, there's a bunch oh, of weird no. shit going on. So it was just like this weird, awkward standing there standoff for like ever, and then we ended up leaving. But it started a fucking riot. It was wild. The co what the cops didn't give you all? They were, dude. It was to be honest, it was all a blur. But yeah, it was just really weird because. The cops weren't doing nothing about the wildness going on. Like, like they were co-signing it or something. Yeah, they were just standing there like, we're not on anybody's team. And I was like, yeah, this is some weird shit. Wow. I ain't never fucking doing a show down here ever again. And where was that at? Yeah. Kentucky? Somewhere in Kentucky. Wow. But then you had that show, but then you had the Kentucky, you want to talk about the Corbin Kentucky shows? Woo! Man. Dude, that was fucking wild. That was something like I ain't never seen before, dude. Yeah. That was, it was so weird getting that, walking out on stage and seeing that many people. I was like, what the fuck? That was the time where I was like, what the hell have I done? Like, yeah. we just fucking sold this arena out and it's fucking full of people. Like, you can just see fucking camera phones like so far away, like all the way around, dude. And all at the bottom, I was like, yo, this is fucking crazy. Can't believe I've made it this far, you know? Yeah, how many How many people would, could that place hold? Dude, I, to be honest, I really don't know. I think it was like 15 or 10, 15,000 people. Yeah, so it was crazy. Because y'all had, had multiple people come out to that show too, didn't you? Fuck yeah, dude. We had we had Struggle, Adam, uh, Demon. Um, I think that was the main one, Struggle, Adam, and Demon. Am I forgetting anybody? Was Leroy on that one with you? Uh, he, he wasn't on the show, but he was there. He was there, there yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. I remember seeing the pictures. That's dope. Did that was know? one hell of a night, dude. Yeah, man, that's cool. That was a cool show. Speaking of shows, bro, mm -hmm. you want to talk about um, shows, like like your situation with the shows? Are you doing any shows right now? Are you going to be touring? or? Oh, I'm bugging yeah. straight up. I canceled all my shows because I'm very self-aware when I'm getting – uh, my mental state is getting like really bad yeah. and I will back up and be like, all right, I got to ooze off for a second. And some people don't do that because they keep being forced to do shit. Yep. Not only that, hell, I'm in court with two people right now. Uh, yeah, still two people right now, back and forth, back and forth. Don't know when I'm going to have to be in court. Don't know when I'm going to have to be on a Zoom call to be in court in Florida. Uh, and on top of that, my, my mental state and everything being so wrecked right now from yep. all this shit. I was like, you know what? It's either canceled sh the shows for this year yeah. or probably never do shows again. I was yeah. like, so I'm just going to cancel this year, regroup, and then get out there next year and fucking kill it. It makes sense, man, especially with you going through everything you're going through. You got to look out for self first, man. Mm -hmm. And that's another good thing about your situation being that you're your own boss to where you're allowed to do that and mm -hmm. look after your well-being when some people may not be that fortunate, you know what I'm saying? Straight up, that's why celebrities kill themselves, bro. Yeah. Because they work themselves to death until they get drove crazy, and then they, because yeah. they, they honestly feel like there is zero escape. Yeah. They feel like the only escape is fucking killing themselves, to be real. Yeah. And I'm not going to kill myself. I got too much shit to do. Talking about, wait, who's got it now? Eli Barnes bought it from you. How long did it take him to redo it? Uh, it's... I want to do the shit out of that fucking thing. Hey, man, I fucking, I, I done got it back like three times since then, and I fucking went to drive it, and I was driving it to Walgreens, and it overheated. Boy, I went fucking, good. I got out, I fucking punched it like 80 million to billion times, broke my hand. Fucking some lady got scared and called the cops. Cops show up. They're like, who hit your car? I was like, me. They're like, with what? I was like, my fist. And they're like, are you, do you need to go to the hospital? I was like, no. Nah. They're like, are you mentally okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine now. They're like, what the fuck? You're like, well, we can't get you in trouble for beating up your own car. <laughs> you just went all the way around it, just beating the shit all up? All the way around it, fucking one two in it. Boom, boom. Hell yeah, what's that like? <laughs> that felt good. I drove it home like that. <laughs> you did? Mm -hmm. Classic. Fucking oh, classic. That's a very funny story. All right, so another thing I figured we could talk about, man, is the, um, the No Jumper interview, the podcast with Adam22. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that briefly? How was it going out to Cali? I know that you had the No Jumper interview. 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 The you don't fly super often, do you? Mm -mm. And I know that was a that was something that you spoke about on there. What did you think of that whole experience and everything? Man, did you, it was. Did you fly out there just for the interview? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just the interview. I'll, well, I've seen some of his stuff before. I was like, dude, that's a big fucking interview, Bible, especially for sure. Like for hip -hop, sure. You know? Yeah. I was like, well, fuck yeah, I'm gonna go do it. 
But before we got there, I was like, mm, I was like, man, maybe they might try to like trick me and ask me like trick questions and shit. And I don't, I don't know if you did or not. I haven't really went back and watched the interview, but it was pretty comfortable because no matter what anybody asked me, I'm going to answer it the right way. And I knew that going in there and I was like, maybe they're not used to somebody being asked anything. Like maybe they do jumble people up, but hell, to be honest, all in all, it was cool. Adam was cool. Yeah. His people was cool. Like they're just regular cool ass motherfuckers. Yeah. And it was cool being able to be on that podcast. Did you get the little... Fuck yeah, I did. You got one for sure. Yeah, he yeah. had me do some trick That's with cool. it, and I fucking got it first try. He's like, "What the fuck?" I throw it through the window. <laughs> probably. It seems like yeah. everybody plays with one thing. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. That's, That's fun. Cool. They fly you out? Uh, honestly, I don't even really know. I just know they wanted me to go there. I fucking got the ticket and was like, "Hell yeah, I went there too." No question. That's a good look, man. Yeah, you get a lot. You're getting a lot of views on it too. I noticed. It's kind of like, yeah, dude. I was like, damn. Did that, oh, so question, that was dope that you got to do that, but did you see any kind of, of course for you, I guess it's hard to see because you get so many, did you see an, an influx of fans after that, new fans from that? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, oh, that, it was worth doing then, Yeah, for sure. because like the, the Roy Jones Jr. question, like you, we were saying yeah. earlier, like a lot of hip hop heads were in the comments, they're like, what the fuck, they're like, how does this fucking yeah. redneck country ass kid know about Roy Jones and you don't, you're a hip hop and, you know, them kind of people come over to my shit because they were like, okay, he, he knows, like, the history of hip-hop. Like, we want to check out this motherfucker. Yeah. So a lot of people who would never even follow, follow me was on in the comments being like, hey, he's telling the truth about who he is. That's fucking real. I'm going to go see what he's about. Yeah. Of course, you had your ones that were like, why did you have this guy on here? Well, fuck those fucking <laughs> people. We don't give a fuck about them people. Was it you would you say, you beta, me alpha? <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me, yeah. Beta, or, no, no, you baited me alpha. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. And then after that, it, then some, I mean, you had some kind of, not, I mean, not so much you, but there was like controversy surrounding that interview back oh, in these about parts. The most, yeah, yeah what, what, it, what happened with that? Like, what, how did that start? I don't know. I guess he got fucking drunk one night and was like, hey. he fucking got on there. <laughs> And was like, you should have the... And first off, he talked about himself. And what do you call it? Third person? That's kind of weird. Yeah. You should have the real boss of the sticks on the show. I'm like, you are girl camouflage. So, I'm yeah. the boss of the sticks. Not you, motherfucker. Like, listen, if you're going to be the boss of the sticks, you got to do boss of the sticks shit. Yeah. And I didn't even bother that motherfucker. Like, he... he y'all didn't even fucking... collab before that, correct? Didn't y'all yeah. do something on, like, a record together? Yeah. I didn't like it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's that's the thing. I'm gonna know when it's time to retire and do something else. A lot of these motherfuckers don't know when it's time to do something else. They <clears throat> they start getting salty because I mean, look, dude, you can't be a young rapper forever. Like, there's gonna be a time when I cut off the rap shit and only do country and rock shit. But that's just a part of growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at least to me and. I feel like they get salty once the new guys come up, and I feel like you should encourage the new guys. Like, like one day, one day in the future, Up Church ain't gonna be cool no more. Like, there's gonna be another kid that comes up that's cool, but that's just how it goes. I'm gonna be old and fucking dead. What the fuck do I care? Like, right. there's got to be another guy come along. You know? Yeah. You can't just want to stay on top forever. I mean, that's just that's just the truth. And I don't want to be fucking fifty years old on stage singing a song from fifteen years ago. You know? Right. I want to be somewhere else doing something else. Well, and plus, too, I mean, like like Jelly has said with me, you have a lot more life out of the rock and the country stuff. Like he was telling me, he can't perform Welcome to the Trap House when he's 60. Right. He can perform Save Me when he's 60. That's because he's self-aware. Yeah. You know? You know, and so that's like just same thing you just said. It's like you want to do your country stuff, you can do that much longer and the rock stuff much longer than you can do the rap stuff. It's got really? more of a shelf life than... The rabbit does. And, and I don't understand why people, these artists that do cling to their self because their ego is so big and they shit on everybody else. Because if you look at it, that's what we're trying to get Nashville back to. We're trying to get Nashville back to the passing down the Nashville torch. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Not, not fucking being in a building and saying who, and who can't be a country singer and who can. Like, yeah. the, the kid from West Nashville sitting on his front porch picking his guitar might be the next fucking country star. But you're not going to know because everybody who's famous is from elsewhere and not from fucking Nashville. Yeah. You know what sure. I mean? For sure. 
I just wanted to get your opinion on that, man, because I know people have asked about it, and I know you've kind of spoken about it on your channel, and, you know. His ass ain't getting no fucking publicity from me. He can get it from his fucking self. I got better I shit. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, the worm shit, as much as I hate that my bro's gone, I know he's watching over us, but that time I got to spend with him meant everything. I know it meant to him and me, and me and Lex, too, because if I would have been working still, I would have maybe got one video because I was working all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was just... It, let's line things up and then me and Jelly got back, you know, where we're talking on the regular and working with him and now me and you were getting to do stuff. So it all made it all worked itself around, but mm -hmm. it's just crazy how that shit that's how it started though. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah, it's dope shit. It's man. wild when you sit back sometimes and you're like, Why the fuck did this or this happen? And you sit back, you're like, Holy shit. Like yeah, some right. crazy great creator was like, This has to happen for this to happen. Yeah. It's like puzzle yeah, puzzle, puzzle pieces, yeah. Yeah. Put it all in place where it's just fall on. All right, Chat Arms TV, we're back with Up Church, man. This interview series is um is Ooh, look at him. Magician. That's what's up, man. I miss the magic. Jesus. <laughs> man. <laughs> so we're here. This episode we're gonna talk about recently, bro, you you did something you that I think is really dope. And y'all, you and, was it you and some other people started out Hollow Boy Records, right? Yep. So, you want to speak on that? Was it you and Snap? Is it? Yeah, me and Snap, dude. Uh, man, it's just, I, I, for so long I've seen what happens downtown. I've had friends who have signed record labels downtown. And then they tell me, you know, what the realness of it is. And I, I've been in positions where I've had meetings with big record labels and have gone in there and seen what they're talking about. I've fucked with their head. I've got them to come to my house, give me free shit. Fucking, oh, I had one of them give me a fucking a flying V Gibson guitar from Gibson. He like come over and uh, to have a meeting with me or whatever and end up giving me that and a bunch of fucking liquor and some other shit. And then at the end of it, I'm always just like, nah, because I, I get the contract in my own hands to where I can read it myself. And it's just a bunch of bullshit. And you really... These kids get locked into these contracts and don't get used for nothing, and they can't use their imagination or write songs or come out shit with shit when they want to. And I really do think that needs to change. And also another thing I think needs to change is how much the person that doesn't make, put it this way, the person that ain't making the music, it's just the, the backing guy. Like, I know these kids have to have the backing guy, but the backing guy makes the money, most of the money from every single one of them. Like, and I want to change that. I, I've made a new blueprint. I'm not going to, you know, right, right. give sure. my whole secret yeah. of my blueprint, no, but put sure. it this way. I think when you start out with them, if they need your help, you take a bigger percentage. The yeah. farther they go and the more they make money and the more they get famous, you take a less percentage and they get more of a percentage. So it evens itself out the entire time. Based off their progression. Once everybody's yeah. made enough money at yeah. the end of their contract, you should let them go on that day release their music back to them and let them make what 90 95 percent of their own profit and you take maybe five or ten not their whole fucking life don't, right. don't no make it to where they yeah. can do that so then when they leave they don't talk shit about you they talk good they bring people to you how they might want to even stay with you and you just build a family out of a record label instead of a fucking prison out of one yeah that's dope man so, and then with Hollow Boy Records, do you want to speak about the first one, first artist that y'all signed to Hollow Boy? Yep. Uh, we signed Chase Matthew. And I've known of this, I've known of him for a while, but there's been certain situations I've been put in with him that made me be like, yo, this kid's fucking dope. One of them was a gun came out at a club. I'm not going to say which one right. because my buddy owns it. But a gun came out at a club like two months ago and... He didn't run off. He was like, yo, let's figure out how to da, da, da. I was like, yo, this kid's fucking cool. You know, before that, he hit me on the shoulder. He's like, hey, if anything pops off, I got your back. I'm like, all right, cool. I fucking, I've taken him riding Harleys down back roads, fucking 80 miles an hour, fucking gravel scattered, shitty roads. He's fucking kept up with me the whole time. I was like, yo, this kid's the fucking real deal. So I hung out with him. And he's talented too. So he just had, he kind of was giving him like a, you wasn't trying to put him through an obstacle course, but you was just testing to see. I want to see how real he was. Yeah. And yeah. it turns out he's real as fuck. And yeah. he sounds good as shit. Yeah. Dude, he he does his own shit, writes his own songs. Fucking, he sounds like just as good as somebody on the radio. But yeah. you can click his profile and be like, oh shit, 
this motherfucker's doing cool shit. Like, just last week, he rode a fucking wheelie all the way across the damn National City Bridge. I was like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. Like, that's something that people are going to click on and be like, dude, this guy's cool. Then click on his song and be like, damn, his song's badass. Yeah. This motherfucker's real shit. I want to fucking keep watching him. Yeah. That's the kind of people I want. And yeah. locals. For sure. That's dope, man. Put some love back in the field, dude. Are y'all, so with Hollow Boy Records, is it just going to be, like, country music? What are y'all trying, what are y'all's, like, end goals with it? Or do y'all just... Whatever genre, you know, Man, fits or whatever the person wants to do that I find that I think is unique and real, I want to let them do whatever they want to do. Yeah. And if it sounds good, I'll be like, let's fucking rock that shit. If it sounds bad, I'm be like, hey, that sounds bad. Right. Let's try <laughs> just to straight be real with them. Like yeah. no beating around the bush because that just in downtown mainstream Nashville that just makes shit weird. Like. And you don't want to be locked in a contract with somebody where the vibe is weird as fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then it's like this big weird situation that's dragged out forever and then nothing cool gets made. Yeah, for sure. Hollow Boy Records, man, for Hollow sure. Hollow Boy Records. Oh, Chase? Chase. Uh, yeah, he's the only one right now. I, we've had a bunch of people hit us up and send us their shit in, but it's just one of them things like a lot of people go out looking for this talent and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want it to pass by me in real life and me notice it and be like, hey, man, what's your name? Yeah. That's a lot cooler and just way more unique to me and authentic. Right. Yes, for sure. That's real. That's dope, man. Hollow Boy Records, man. Ride up church. Chase Matthew. We are uh, up church is making sausage biscuits right now. Jim Dean. What's going on in life? I got that boy. Don't say boy. So it. I can't speak English. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. So the new album just dropped. Same old, same old. Same old, same old. And the same old, same old happened. You charting up, 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 up in the charts, mama. <laughs> and tell them about it, how you dropped it. Like, you didn't even, it was kind of like, no hey, I'm dropping pre order, yeah. No pre-order, no fucking announcing of a date. No nothing. Just straight fucking, this one I felt like dropping it, so we dropped it. And when it popped up, I was like, hey, the album's out. That's about it. And fucking... That's the thing, though. The album, the way me and Stoner put it together, it was, in, at least in my opinion, and a lot of other people's, there's going to be people who say otherwise, but it, there was hardly no filler songs on it. Like, we were really careful about which ones we picked to be on this album. So when somebody did put it in, I wanted them from start to finish to, one, be like, holy shit, every song was a banger. Yeah. Two, I wanted the core country fans to feel the album more than the commercial country fans. So I did a lot of things in the album, like uh, shout out old legendary country singers like Chris Ledoux, uh, Charlie Daniels, made really cool uh, traditional country references, even had a really traditional country song uh, in it called Black Sheep, uh, you know, but the whole album is about, it's about Music City and everywhere around Music City. and. It's just, it's one of them albums that it has a lot of replay value because of what it's talking about and how it sounds. And it, it's definitely showed with the charts, which is why I kind of was like, fuck it, let's just wing it and drop it. If it's good, it'll be in the number one spot for a few days. If it's not, then it won't hit that spot at all. That'll let me know if I'm good at country or not. And if I am, I'll keep doing it. And if, if it flops, then I'll probably just stick to rap music. And here we are, day four, and it's still number one in all genres. So... I'm gonna make another one. That's such a badass boss mentality. Have, uh, for sure. Let's just put it out, and if it's good, it'll be number one. And right. if it's yeah. not, it won't be. Not True. Like no yeah, publicist, no paid promotion, no nothing. Yeah, man. Zero. And the funny thing is, is the whole time that I've been doing country, you see all these controversies going on where all these country singers are being like, "I'm sorry that I did this," blah, 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 yeah. or whatever, and. I'm just over here like, aha, y'all are being sissies. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm gonna put this album out and I, I'm a, and there's a song in there called What I Claim. And it's just about that. It's about the country music listeners feeling abandoned because the person that's writing songs for them is not claiming them. They're fucking saying, else, saying something else. Like they're saying sorry for this, that, and the other. And fuck saying sorry, dude. We don't, we're, this is America. We don't fucking say sorry. We just fix the problem and keep going. Like. Fuck? Yeah. I'm sorry. If y'all haven't picked up same old same old man, go ahead and do that. Stream that for sure. <laughs> what's I'm the, sorry. <laughs> what's, I'm your, sorry. what's your favorite record on the new album? 
Personally, your favorite one. You got pick one. It's called For Real Country. Gotcha. And <laughs> it's just saying pretty much, hey, I, I'm for real country, and I'm speaking and singing for real country people around Nashville. Not the fucking kid who fucking flew here from California with his light blue, baby blue fucking Schwinn bicycle that's been re remade up to look good with all the bells and whistles. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go to a bakery and write a song with six other motherfuckers. Like, what the fuck? Like, why it takes six motherfuckers to write that hit song, bro? Like, that's what I said up there on Instagram. I was like, why in the fuck? Do you see this country singer over here getting married and having all this, oh, he's so in love, and then next week he releases a fucking song. It's like, I broke up with my girl in the rain, and I'm sad, and I fell in a pond, skint my knee. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You just got married. You can't be that sad right now. Yeah. That's somebody else's fucking song. Let them fucking sing it. <laughs> that's just how I feel, though, man. Like, uh, that's, that's just how I feel about music, because look at rappers, bro. All these fucking badass rappers out here, no one's writing. No, you can't sit down and be like, I'm going to write your rap song for you. At least right. all the motherfuckers that are killing it, especially independently, they all write their own rap songs. Yeah. Why is country any different? You know what I mean? Right. Good point. So. Boom. Up church. We don't need another pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs>